Hi everyone, thanks for watching On Call for All Kids. Today we're talking about peripheral nerve damage in children. We'll be discussing the difference between the peripheral versus central nervous system, how kids can get peripheral nerve damage, and the benefits of seeing a specialist. I am joined by Dr. Alan Bellsberg. He is the medical director of the Peripheral Nerve Program at Johns Hopkins Hospital, and it's great to have you here today. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about peripheral nervous system versus the central nervous system. So how is this different? So the central nervous system involves the brain. Most people know where that is, the spine and the spinal cord. That's our central nervous system. But then there are the nerves. Think of them as the electric cables that leave the spinal cord, leave the brain, and they travel throughout the body to control the body. So they're the nerves or cables that come down your arms and make your arms and hands work. They leave the spinal cord and make your legs work. They're what really make everything happen once they leave either the brain or the spinal cord. And we've heard about nerve damage definitely in adults, but this can happen in babies, kids, children as well. How do they get this damage and how does this kind of differ from adults? So the mechanism of injury of a peripheral nerve in a child and in an adult is basically the same. A nerve can get stretched, a nerve can get compressed, and a nerve can get cut. And in rare instances we can even have tumors on nerves. So motor vehicle accidents, for example, hit children and hit adults and unfortunately result in nerve injuries. Sometimes tumors will grow on nerves and in babies the birthing process itself can actually cause a, fa a rather severe injury to the nerves. At what point do you end up seeing these kids and children? How do they make their way to you? Usually what would happen is the uh, obstetrician may notice right away after a baby is delivered or certainly the pediatrician will notice that one of the arms may not be working well, one of the hands may not be working well and they attribute that to a peripheral nerve injury, to a stretching of the nerves. They make that diagnosis they follow that child for time, be it a few hours, a few days. Once they are concluding that it's a peripheral nerve injury, they tend to refer the patient over. Once they get over to you, what's the process look like from there? And specifically, talk a little bit about our, our clinic here at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. We try to start these children as quickly as possible on therapy, and that may be physical therapy, occupational therapy, something to keep the extremities moving and so on. But then we see the child as quickly as we can in our multidisciplinary clinic here at All Children's Hospital. We'll see them as really as quickly as we can schedule them, and then we follow them very closely in that clinic. When you talk about multidisciplinary, what exactly does that mean? That's a huge benefit for patients. Well, they, again, the pediatrician will make the diagnosis and suspect that a nerve's been injured. But these are fortunately uncommon injuries, so they may not have much experience with it. A multidisciplinary clinic, what we have, brings a bunch of different specialties together all in one room. We'll have a neurosurgeon, myself, an orthopedic surgeon, a rehabilitation or physical medicine uh, doctor, and then we have an occupational therapist, physical therapist, all the different therapists. We all come together, we all ascend or descend on the patient at once, we see the child together with their parent, and then we formulate a plan. We meet as a group, we discuss it as a group, and then come up with an individualized plan for that patient. So everything they need in a one-stop shop, one essentially. One-stop shopping. That's all what right. we're really after. But then they go home with that, in the sense that we may design a therapy program, for example, where they don't have to come to our hospital for that. If there's a program closer to home, we'll work with their local therapist, we'll work with their local physicians. But what they're getting with us is the designing of a program specific for that child. And not only that, but you will do research surrounding this. Talk about why that is important as well. So uh, research becomes very important. Myself, my own practice is about 60 to 70 percent of my time is spent doing neurosurgery, but about 30 percent of my time is research. When I see a child with a nerve injury, we may or may not have a solution. The great thing that we can do here at All Children's or in Baltimore for that matter at Johns Hopkins there is I can walk down the hall where our laboratories are, bring that question to the laboratory and we collaborate. We have basic scientists, we have scientists like myself who are working all the time in the lab. We take that question, we work on it sometimes with a computer model, sometimes with animal research and we come up with a solution. We walk right back up the wall or up the hall rather and I can then provide that solution directly to the child. 
That's a very unique thing. There are very few centers in the world that can do that. Yeah, that's where I would want my child being treated. That is for sure. So last question, you mentioned maybe not all cases need surgery. I think that's something one, you know, parents would really be concerned about. Is my child, if they have this peripheral nerve damage, are they gonna need to have surgery? So the fortunate thing is that children do very well. Children have a remarkable ability to heal their body. By far, the vast majority of peripheral nerve injuries don't need surgery. They need therapy, and we design, again, a therapy program to allow nature to heal them as well as possible. Only a very small proportion of these children actually require us to perform an operation. Sometimes that operation is directed at the nerve itself, and we repair the nerve, we replace the nerve, or in certain situations, we even rewire the way things are working, but that's uncommon. And then there's secondary operations that may have, to, may have to happen a little later in life, where one of my orthopedic colleagues will move a tendon or a muscle around, adjust a joint. We basically want to maximize whatever it is that nature can do, we're going to maximize it. We're going to provide the best possible outcome for that child. All right. Well, Dr. Bellsberg, thank you so much for joining us today and teaching us a little bit more about peripheral nerve in the clinic that we have here at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. If you have a topic idea you would like us to look into, you can comment below right here on this video. And don't forget to check out our website. It's hopkinsallchildrens.org slash newsroom. We have a lot of pediatric healthcare information there, patient stories. We'd love for you to check it out. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next week.